every time I turn around. Christians, friends, countrymen, greetings and salutations. This is a day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In the strong, highly exalted, excellent, matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, I welcome you to our broadcast today where we are living by the word. We are very excited about sharing with you our message today. A message of hope, a message of inspiration and exhortation, a message that we are confident will greatly assist you in solving and resolving the problems and the issues and the concerns that you have. Perhaps you have been praying to the Lord about some specific matters and you believe the answer has not yet been forthcoming. We hope today you'll find answers forthcoming in the message that you are about to see. But without any further ado, come along with us now into the sanctuary where our service is already in progress. You know, I keep playing these songs and there's a reason why I play certain kinds of songs before I preach. Because there are many who are still amazed that I'm still alive after all these years of the things I've had to face. But it was you, Jesus. It was you, Jesus. And you know, the words you speak are so important. Because this man, this man who is singing, the lead singer for that group, the Supreme Angel, Slim Hunt, he died some years ago. Slim is dead. But he's still talking to us. He's still talking to us. He's still talking to us. And I know some people might be upset. But we lionize Bob Marley. We, we idolize this man. Some almost worship at his altar. But what is he saying? They're both on the other side now. Both Slim and Bob are on the other side. But Slim doesn't have to speak anymore because he's still speaking to us down here. A positive legacy left behind. Bob Marley is still speaking too. What is he saying? He wants to bomb churches because preachers are liars. He doesn't want to hear about getting saved in Jesus' name. And he's still talking to people down here. That's why Jesus is saying, be careful of your words. Because every idle, careless, unproductive word has to be accounted for. What will your legacy be? When you are gone, how will they quote you? What are the things that you'll be remembered by? By now you realize I can't preach my Palm Sunday message. Because there's no time to preach that. But this was a Sunday when Jesus approached Bethany at the foot of the Mount Olives. And he called his disciples and he said, Go and fetch me a colt that is tied across there and bring it to me. And if the owner asks, What are you doing? Just say, The Lord has need of it. So they went. And they untied the colt. And the owner did ask, What are you doing? And they said, The Lord has need of it. He said nothing more. And they threw their cloaks over the colt. And they lifted Jesus on top of the colt. And as he rode into town, you must understand the kind of activities in there. It was approaching Passover. The biggest feast and so he had Jews from all around gathering there to celebrate fast over tourists were there hundreds of thousands of people 
and they lined the streets and they threw their cloaks down and they are celebrating and they sang Hosanna Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord but while they're singing that they were singing Jesus not a redeemer but a revolutionary they had got fed up of Roman rule they were celebrating Passover which was God's deliverance from Egypt oppression I know they're believing that their Messiah would be this revolutionary who freed them from Roman rule and so they're celebrating Passover not realizing as they celebrate Passover it was the road to Calvary they didn't understand Jesus for he didn't come riding into Jerusalem on a horse which would indicate war how did he come on a horse he would have been saying I have come to war but he came on a colt saying I have come in peace the prince of peace and when they discovered that he was not the revolutionary they expected they turned against him As I said earlier, men will follow Jesus to the cross, but not on the cross. And how little has anything changed for the church has not changed. There are many, there are many who will still follow Jesus to the cross as we commemorate crucifixion this week. But they are not going on the cross. They are not taking up any cross. And they don't want anything to do with him crucified. I want that to sink a little bit. Revolutionary or redeemer. They had in jail some, some insurrectionists like Barabbas. In today's world, you might call them terrorists. But these are fighting. These are fighting to release. The Jews from Roman colonialism and domination. And it could be when they realized that Jesus was not going to be this revolutionary. At first I saw him you know, as a revolutionary and a mystic because they also heard that he did healing. But when they realized that mm -mm, he didn't come for that which they expected, they turned against him. And turn to the insur insurrectionists. Barabbas. And how many today still misunderstand what Jesus is about? Many preach today, He is about granting you all kinds of material things, which He does. He does. Not for everyone. But for some special ones. Hallelujah. But in any case, he's saying, don't focus on that. Hallelujah. Those things are so small and inconsequential. Why are you seeking that? Seek me and I'll add those things to you. For he says, if you, if you can't handle those things, then put them in their proper perspective. You can't handle the true riches of God. Do we still understand Jesus, what he was about? Even the disciples who were so close to him, they, they sat and they ate and they slept. As they evangelized. They didn't understand him either. These guys were saying, we'll die with you. We are willing to live our lives. But when push comes to shove, or they say the rubber hits the road, like some Christians in church. Nobody is as loud as they are. When things are coming up on the door. And roses. But the minute. The minute the challenges come. They're gone silent. Today like Joshua. I want to declare to you. As for me. And those who live in my house 
we going to serve God. When you begin to understand that everything else pales in importance when compared to what you have with God. But we constantly have to make choices. Yes. Will you spread your cloak one day for Jesus to ride over as you sing Hosanna? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But when you discover it's not necessarily your agenda that God works with, but his agenda. And they can be very different. What then will be your position? Many of us wants to, many of us want to command God and to get God to conform to our position. And we'll serve God so long as He conforms to our wishes and our desires. But when you hang around God long enough. You'll discover not your will. Never going to be your will. And where you can harmonize your will with his will, then something may happen for you. I remember it was a prime minister of Jamaica, Hugh Sherrill, who said that he has never seen a Brinks van carrying all the, the riches of the deceased in the procession. Napoleon says, before he dies, he says, he had three requests. He said, when, when, I, when he dies, he wants his hand to hang outside the casket, open and empty. So everyone can see he's taking nothing with him where he's going. He wants doctors around there as well. Young doctor, listen to this. He wants doctors there as well. So people can realize that the very best of them could not sustain a maintain life. Solomon, the backslider that we like to quote. And I, let me remind you here, a lot of what Solomon did and said were done and said while he was in a backslidden state. For when he said, for instance, there is nothing new under the sun. He was a backslider at the time. Stop saying it. For there are new things under the sun. And God says, I'll do new things. Even though he's saying to some of you, I am doing a new thing. Hallelujah. At the end of our day, which we're all going to arrive at, sooner or later, we're all going to arrive there, sir. This is time. And we were not created by God to live in time. We were created to live in eternity. And we must leave time and be translated to eternity. And when you get there, you have a healthy appreciation of things. Things that mattered so much to you here will have no importance there. For this body that desires the things of the earth and of the flesh would have been done away with and put aside. And your new glorified body will have different desires. There will be no longer any man on woman's story. You no longer have those kinds of desires anymore. The spirit of lust, you'd have left that down here. That's why over there you have no wife or husband. Amen. 
So you want to give up your salvation for a man or a woman or for things? Only God deserves to worship. He laid down deity and took on flesh and sacrificed himself for you to make it possible for you to escape the wrath which is about to unleash on the earth. He's not doing anything more. So he has preachers like me and many others like evangelist Edwin Deo singing song and song. To spread the word and to encourage your heart. I said, get it right. Get it right. So it's the week, the last week before Good Friday. The last week. This is the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry. Hmm. Hallelujah. Church, I speak a certain way to you these days because I want to ensure that when I'm no longer with you, the words I'm speaking will still resonate with you and perhaps help you to redeem and rescue yourself. Time is at hand. It's not a time to fool around. It's a time to fix it with God. I have this upon the authority of God's word and the evidence of one who's been on that side too. For Jesus himself went into hell. That's why he was crucified. Why he left his body on the tree. So by his spirit, he could enter into the underground, into hell. And he went into hell. For the three days when he was missing, he was in hell. Preaching. Preaching to the persons who had died before he, the salvation of God came. And making sure even those who died before he came would have the same chance as the living and he preached him and said, I am God's salvation. I am Yahshua, the son of Yahweh. And I come to bring salvation. You have found yourself in hell by your bad choices. But today, if you believe in me and accept me, you can walk out of hell with me today. And the Bible says in Matthew 27, 52, that graves opened. People were long dead. The graves burst open and they saw their old dead walking through Jerusalem. But interestingly, not everybody came out with him. Some stayed back in hell. Like this morning, I'm preaching the word of God to you. And like the sun that melts the ice. It may even harden the clay among us. Not everyone is going to receive what I'm saying. An intellectual man and I had an exchange on Facebook. I won't get into all of what I said. But I said to him, I want to check back 50 years time. Because I guarantee you that you'll no longer be an atheist, but it'll be too late. You'll no longer be wondering if there's a God. You will know. Because you would have come to him face to face. You won't be talking like this 50 years time. How do you know you are right and he's wrong and I'm wrong? I said, well, first of all, the most credible person I know told me so. And who's the most credible person you know? 
You don't know him yet. His name is Jesus. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. Do people speak like that? And behold, I am alive forevermore. And now I have the keys of death and of hell. You want to escape these things? I know control these things. No longer sit and control those things. I am the liberator. I am the one that can release you from there. No one else can. But this time, if you manage to get into hell after you expire, I can't help you. I want to release now those who are still above the ground. For you have the preacher. Listen to him. This week, this week, as we focus on the sacrifice of self through love, Jesus Christ, let us ensure that we fix what needs to be fixed. You see, there are many believers who think you can just do as you like and say, God forgive me and he forgives you. He'll not. For presumptuous sins are not so forgivable. When you calculate sin and plan sin, you better be able to pay for it for yourself because you can't charge it to Calvary. You can't plan and execute sin and saying, Jesus, forgive me. We're talking to ask Esau. He did that. He planned to sell his birthright, his salvation. For a mess of pottage for food. And then thought when he's ready, he can come back and pick it up back. I got so what are you doing? He sought God carefully with tears and loud prayers. And God said, No, you're out. He found no place of repentance. We think that God will be so ecstatic. That we will betray him, come back to him, and him just gonna accept us back. You don't know who you're talking about. Whoever is pushing that, you know, they are leading you to hell. Remember that. We think we can live any way we want to live. Uh, when you get old and decrepit. We come and say, God, see me now. See me now, God. As I close, let me just say something to you. You can come to my yard and hang out at my gate, but you can't come inside my house unless I invite you. That's my house. And God is saying, who do you think you are? You live all your life being hostile to my message and my people. At the end of the day, you want to come? You want to just come like that? If you live like that, you're going to have a high price to pay. Ask Paul. The greater the sinner you have become is the greater the price you have to pay for this kingdom. Let me undeceive you. Those who preach that prosperity message are driving too many people into hell. God will prosper you. He says it's my pleasure. To give you the kingdom. But seek the kingdom. And those things will accrue to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. 
and his righteousness and the things that the Gentiles are seeking I will give to you you don't have to seek them I'll give them to you focus on Calvary think on Calvary everything was won for you at Calvary but there has been a response from you you see this get happy in Jesus thing I have to stop now you know Everybody get happy in Jesus, but the body get holy. Yeah. I thank God he has brought me to a place where I'm free to speak my mind. And to speak the word of God. I'm trying to save souls. Yes, undiluted. No compromise. We all have had our time with that, you know. But that can't be forever. The time has come. God is deserving. There's a man, the song I play now. You know why I love them? The one who plays the guitar. He was a great rock guitarist. And they enticed him. And he said, no. He said, you know, when I think about it, I'm young now. And God is deserving of some of the talents he has given to us to come back and to him. He said, I'll not, I'll not do it. I'll not do it. I can't be purely a secularist. God deserves some people, young and strong. That's why he's calling you young people. Because you're young and you're strong. He wants you now. Older people are more mature people. Nobody's old in God's kingdom. Those of more advanced age, years, you need to respond to. Today, my challenge is to you. And you all know yourselves. And I said it earlier. There will be no secrets when we cross over. Secrets are for now and not, not entirely for now. Because there are some things God tell me too. But some of you. But there will be no secrets across there. You know your relationship with God needs some fixing. Some of you in here don't even have a relationship with God yet. I'm inviting you to come now. Remember. Remember. I preach, I preach for 120 years. I said destruction is coming. Destruction is coming. And they mocked. And they criticized. And they jeered and they ridiculed like they even do now. They had never seen rain. So they don't believe him. Because rain had never fallen on the earth. But on a particular day, tip, tip, tip. And they, what is that? And they speak of speed. Torrential rain. And they remember the word. They ran towards the ark. And they call him no uncle, no father, no whatever, no. Neighbor, no. And God said, no. Step aside. Step aside now. Because I am closing this door myself. And God was the one who locked the door of the ark. And the waters of destruction began to rise. As it rose, it lifted the ark. But it immersed those outside the ark. The waters are rising again. Destruction is about to visit this earth. How secure are you? I share my life story with you over and over. Because I want you to understand something. Those 15 years of my life I spent studying paranormal, the paranormal and parapsychology. 
I understand the spirit world. I know it's real. I know it's more real than this world. For the world you live in, the seen world, the physical world, the material, tangible world, was created by the invisible world. And God lives in an invisible world. And he hasn't given you a better place than where he is. When you arrive at that gate, we're all going to arrive there. We're all on death row. Everybody in here is on death row. That question, what date you going? I want, when I arrive, the heavenly hosts. They're going to stand aside. They're going to stand aside as we sing our song because they can't sing with us. But only the redeemed of the Lord can sing that song. And we'll be seeing each other, some of us. And we hug and greet for you made it in. But sadly, there are some, maybe even among us now, who will not make it. Wasted lives. Live 30, 40, 50, 60 years on the earth and then die and go to hell. What a waste of humanity. Of time. If you're here this morning and you know you're not a Christian, you have been rejecting the message of the gospel and Jesus Christ, and you're here this morning, and if the Spirit of God is tugging at your heart and you're feeling sensations in the body, then that's a call from God. He's not going to speak to you in an audible voice, He speaks to you through my voice. But if you feel those sensations, then God is probably calling you. You need to come up here. Don't harden your heart and don't resist it if conviction is upon you. I made the call. Again. If you're in here and you are not a believer, you have never accepted Jesus, please come to the altar. the spirit hear the spirit call come just as you are turn to the person beside you and say are you hearing the spirit come calling you huh? are you hearing Well, we are out of time, but not out of message. There's a lot more message to come. That was part one, and the rest of the message will come to you in our next broadcast. However, if you would like to get the message in its entirety before the next broadcast, we encourage you to call those numbers which are appearing on your screen right now, and our office will be only too happy to rush the tapes to you. Of course, the message is available to you in DVD, in CDs, or in audio. Uh, tape form, whichever you would like. Until next time on the same channel, we want to remind you that if you believe, you will receive. If you doubt, you will do it out. Your faith is your greatest asset. Make sure you continue to feed it and to grow it in the name of Jesus Christ. A faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So we encourage you to stay tuned to this very same channel where other Christian programs is going to you and which will also assist in building your faith. Until next week, we pray God's blessings and protection over you and yours.